Well, welcome to the Gate HD Podcast. My name is Zach Howard. Right here with me is Pastor Randy. And what we're going to do today for this episode is we're going to do some Q&A. So what we've been typically doing on Sunday mornings is that Pastor Randy has been fielding some questions and answering them at the end of the sermon. And uh, But we were not able to do that this past service because it was such a good Sunday. We kind of ran out of time. But we wanted to be faithful and answer the questions that were sent in. And so that's what we're going to do today. Pastor Randy has been going through this series, The Faithful and Fruitful People of God. It's been an incredible series. Me and Josh have a couple podcasts where we talk about this. So we encourage you to look those up as well. Yesterday's sermon, uh, or this past week's sermon, was the key to a revived and reformed people. It was an incredible sermon, and we got um, a few questions that were sent in to us, and so we just wanted to take some time and answer those for you guys, and so uh, we'll just jump right in with Pastor Randy here. So the first question is uh, actually a question about what's going on in the world today, so it has to do with the sermon, but it also just wants to gauge Pastor Randy's opinion. And so I'll read the questions word for word, just so um, I'm faithful to what people have texted in. And so the first question is, Pastor Randy, you are an anointed and very concerned and caring pillar in the local church and community. My question to you is, do you believe that President Donald Trump is for or against America and her ally Israel? I have no hidden motive here, sir. Just wanted to know what you think, feel, and believe about this man, regardless of what others think and say. Either way, it won't change how you have blessed me, encouraged me, and my respect for you. So, heavy question. Feel free to answer it. (laughs) Well, it's good to be here, and it's good to be on this podcast and to field the questions that have been presented to us. Again, let me just say up front, Uh, I don't have all the answers, but I do want to be faithful to respond to people who have legitimate concerns. Uh, The whole purpose behind the Q&As have been to basically deal with a subject matter that I've been teaching and and preaching on. Uh, This one is a little outside that, but I uh, told Zach earlier that I'd be willing to respond to this just so that people don't think I'm ignoring them or trying to uh, skirt around issues such as this. Um, Going back to the sermon this past Sunday, uh, it's divine presence, the key to a revived and reformed people. Uh, Two weeks ago I did uh, divine purpose, Mm -hmm. uh, the key to a faithful and fruitful people, and so that's kind of the flow that we've been in. But responding to this particular question, let me just say first and foremost that uh, I respect the office of the presidency. Um, It's a powerful office. It's a powerful position of prestige and power. And uh, of course, you know, our nation being the great nation that it is, has a lot of influence globally. And so anyone who serves in that role is going to have a lot of responsibility. And so I respect that. I have some real concerns about Donald Trump and always have had concerns about Donald Trump. Um, I think he is doing the best he can with the skill set that he has. Um, I support him as the President of the United States while at the same time having a lot of concerns around his ability uh, to lead our nation. And so I know people will take issue with me on that because they are avid. There are a lot of Christians who are avid Donald Trump supporters. I'm not an avid supporter. I'm a supporter of those who are in authority over us and those Mm -hmm. who are leading us. And uh, I would say that about anyone who is in that position, including, you know, our former president, uh, Barack Obama. I disagreed with him on many, many things, most things. Uh, while at the same time I respect him and I respect the position. So I would say the same with Donald Trump. As far as uh, the specifics of the question, if I heard it right, and I'll just look at my notes, and so I need help here. 
Uh, do you believe that Donald Trump is for or against America and her ally Israel? Well, I, I certainly don't think he's against America. I believe that he loves his country. I believe he has a specific uh, idea around what he thinks our country should be. And whether we agree with that or not, uh, I don't think we can call into question um, his dislike or uh, for the nation that he is serving. Uh, so I certainly don't think that he's against America. And I don't think he's against Israel. Um, Israel is, of course, our closest ally, our best friend. And uh, we need to make sure that we maintain that relationship because they're a, a democratic nation. And they love freedom and they love peace. And uh, so I don't think he's against America or Israel. I just think that there are those who... Uh, don't quite understand mm -hmm. what his goals are and what his aims are. So I guess that's as much as I can say about that without getting too political. Um, I have a certain standard of belief. I have a certain way in which I think this nation should go and I think it should be uh, clear to Christians that we have a Christian worldview, a biblical worldview, and therefore we, we base our convictions and our lives on the Bible. And certainly we believe, and I believe, that we should apply more of those principles mm -hmm. even in the governing of our, of our nation. Yeah. Um, so I won't get into questioning Donald Trump's sincerity. I won't get into questioning uh, his professions of faith or whatever, you know. Uh, that's, that's not for me to judge, but... Um, I do disagree with him on a number of issues, but I also think that he still needs time. Yeah. So, yep. Great. Well, we'll go ahead and move into more uh, specific questions for the, the series and the sermons that we received. Mm -hmm. And so the second question is, I feel I have a significant purpose for Christ. I feel it strong. When I share these thoughts, I tend to take others' rolling eyes or comments, and they shut me down. How do I overcome this and break through and pursue this faith-filled passion? Mm, good question. Yeah. I think it's important for us to not allow the feelings, words, body language of others to dictate uh, our lives. I don't think that they should be the determining factors as to whether or not we can achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, if you believe that you have a God-given purpose, then pursue that purpose with everything that's within you. Uh, hear God, listen to God, be affirmed in God. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that uh, how you proceed with your purpose is rooted in uh, holiness and righteousness. Uh, make sure it's based upon uh, an understanding of Scripture uh, for your own personal life. And then get in a place where you can actually be equipped and trained and encouraged to fulfill your yeah. purpose and, good. and your destiny. So I guess I would say don't let others uh, dictate to you or make you feel as if uh, what God is saying to you is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I know that's difficult because we're we're human beings with feelings, with emotions. We want to be encouraged. We want people to assist us rather than, um, you know, detour us from, from our purpose and our destiny. But it takes a real deep personal relationship with the Lord to be affirmed in Him. Yeah. And if we get our affirmation from Him, then that's all you need. Right. That's good. Good, good, good. So number three, next question. Is God present when we sin? Hmm. Is God present when we sin? Well, this past week I dealt with divine presence, and I talked about two different types of presence of God. First, there's the omnipresence of God, which uh, is an attribute of God. He is everywhere at all times. David said, you know, where can I go and, you know, away from your presence? Because even if I make my bed in hell, you are there, you know. So God's omnipresence is everywhere. He's within his creation. He's outside his creation. He fills all the space that exists. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there's another way of understanding his presence, and that's the manifested presence. Mm -hmm. Manifested presence is when God shows up in time and space. 
it's where he actualizes himself in a particular way and uh, and that's the kind of presence that we are very encouraged in the scriptures to pursue so the question is is God present when we sin well in his omnipresence of course he's always there he's everywhere um, but I think a better way of asking the question would be uh, when I sin am I in God's presence hmm. because again as I've said we are very much desiring and and asking for the presence of God and uh, and yet I think God is saying you know I'm present but where are you mm -hmm. and when we sin we are we are indicating that we are not fully aware or conscious of, of God uh, because if we were we wouldn't be sinning right and so I think certainly as a Christian the Holy Spirit dwells within us and the Holy Spirit is always working to convict us of our sin so that we live in repentance. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, yes, of course, God is present. Good. Now this, uh, this next question is a, you might have to, uh, for those listening or watching, will have to maybe give the sermon another look or even refresh themselves on the sermon. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the question is, would Psalm 22, 3 be a proof text for your sermon that you taught on September 3rd, just for those listening to the podcast? And the verse goes, Yet you are wholly enthroned on the praises of the Israel. So, would this psalm be a proof text for this message? Well, I would need to, to look at it. I have, haven't had time to really process yeah. these questions, so I'd have to look at it and see in the context. Uh, and you're talking about the sermon on purpose, uh, which was September 3rd. Or, yeah. Okay. Or divine presence, yeah. Well, presence was this past Sunday. Oh, this was yeah. the yeah. third. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was thinking it was the 10th. Your birthday was yesterday. That's true. It was my birthday. I should know that. <laughs> I should be fully aware of where I am and what time of history I exist. Um <clears throat> Well, the bottom line is, uh, this is one verse here, yet you are wholly enthroned on the praises of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the Bible says, where two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. Correct, yeah. And that uh, God is in the midst of those who praise him. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's an indication of our awareness of God's presence. Mm -hmm. And so the more aware we are of God's presence, the more presence of God there is. Uh, because again, it's it's about God manifesting Himself, actualizing Himself in space and time, and so I do think that uh, it, this could very well be uh, a verse that uh, is very helpful in making that point. So yeah, I'll just absolutely. leave it at that. Absolutely. So we have two more questions, and so question number five. Uh, hold on, let me just say yeah. this because I don't know. Sometimes people ask questions with a particular bent mm -hmm. and uh, one, of, one of the things as I'm looking at this verse yet you are holy and thrown in the praises of Israel you know with with people's view on Israel I'm not quite sure the motive behind this question in light of Israel so maybe it is you know uh, highlighting Israel and I would just just to be just a little controversial maybe I don't know I would just say that we are Israel right and yeah. uh, Paul is very clear in Scripture that we have been grafted in as believers mm -hmm. and that we've become the nation of or a holy nation, a peculiar people set apart. And so uh, the praises of Israel, the praises of God's people, the praises of the redeemed certainly are an indication of the presence of God. Yeah, absolutely. It's good stuff. We just talked about that in our Galatians Bible study on Wednesday nights. <laughs> so number five. Um, next question is, how do we get past differing views of what preparation look like so that we might experience His manifest presence in a larger volume here on Sundays? Well, that goes to some of the points that I was making in the message where I talked about uh, sacrifice, prayer, preparation, expectation, mm -hmm. and then, of course, God responds. And for the viewers who may not have listened to the sermon, I went through various different examples of Scripture, and there are, there are many. Matter of fact, it is, you know, the one thing that I look for in Scripture is are there patterns? Mm -hmm. And when talking about the divine presence of God, 
we, we must go to the scripture and say, where then did God show up in manifested presence? And were there some patterns? Were there some things around that uh, particular situation that helped the presence of God? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have found that certainly sacrifice was always involved. Mm-hmm. Prayer was always involved. Preparation was always involved. Expectancy was involved. And then God responded. Mm-hmm. And so this question is in, in that context. Right. Uh, how did we get past differing views of what preparation looks like so that we might experience the manifest presence in a large volume here on Sundays? This question may go to someone's idea of what Sunday church should look like in light of how do we prepare for the greater manifestations of God's presence. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think it's not just about a Sunday deal. I think Sunday should be always a culmination of what's going on in people's lives mm, yeah. every day of the week. So if, if we're only preparing for Sunday, but we're not just preparing, period, and then we're, we're, we're going to be a little skewed, we're going to be a little off. Uh, Sunday is an accumulation. It's a it's a totality of of what we've been experiencing in our lives. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday as well. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about preparation, it's about preparing your heart, preparing your mind, preparing your your family, preparing you know your home. All of those things are where the manifested presence of God should be made manifest. Mm-hmm. If they're not being if we're not experiencing God in our daily lives, then we're going to have a limited manifestation of God on Sunday morning. Yeah. And uh, so I've often said that the level of your thirst and your hunger and the, the level of desperation will determine the level of manifestation of God's holy presence. And so I would say, you know, again, it's about sacrifice. You know, are we living lives of sacrifice or are we living lives of comfort and convenience? You know, are we praying? Are we really seeking God as the Bible, in, you know, encourages us to do? To seek Him while He may be found. Seek Him with everything that's within you. Seek Him with your whole heart. Love Him. You know, are we, are we seeking Him? Are we sacrificing? Are we praying? You know, are we, are we preparing our lives as a habitation of God right. rather than just wanting these casual visitations where we we get glimpses of God and it's enough fuel to get us going but that's not what God wants God God intends to to habitate in his people mm-hmm. and to habitate in the earth mm-hmm. and so all of that is preparation how do I prepare my heart how do I prepare my home how do I prepare and so uh, it's not about different, differing views. It's about going to Scripture and finding the pattern. Right. You know. It's good. Uh, this whole thing of, you know, people think that well, we need to minister. We got to have songs. We got to do music. We got to do certain things. Yeah. Those are our byproducts mm-hmm. of prepared lives. Sure. We sing because we we. We pray because we, we receive encouragement from the Word because our hearts are capable of containing the manifestations of God through those tools. Yeah, it's a really good answer. Joining of heaven and earth. Um, mm-hmm. Last question uh, before, we, before we're done is a simple define earnest prayer. Earnest prayer. Define earnest prayer. Well, earnest prayer is intentional prayer. Mm -hmm. It is passionate prayer. It is purposeful prayer. It is prayer that uh, is consistent. It's, you know, sometimes we we say these, now I lay me down to sleep kind of prayers, you know, in passing, or we do it Mm -hmm. by rote, or, you know, we, we will ask for things but then we'll stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won't push in. And I think earnest prayer certainly is a pushing in. It's, it's tugging on the garment of Jesus 
consistently and consciously. And that kind of fervent prayer is what really uh, pleases the Lord mm -hmm. because He wants us to to want what He wants. Yeah. And the only way that He will ever know that we want what He wants is if we're passionate about what it is that He wants. Yeah. And prayer is is not so much um, asking for things outside the realm of his will, but rather it's asking for things inside the realm of his mm -hmm. will. And we can't really pray effectively or fervently or earnestly unless we know the heart of God. Mm -hmm. So it's first relationship with him to the degree that we know the heart of God. I've often said it's not enough just to know the word of God. We need to know the will of God that is expressed in his word. But even that is not enough. We need to know the ways of God. And so when we know the word and we, we discern the will and we recognize the ways of God, then we can come into alignment with his heart in a way that we pray and we know that our prayers will be answered. Yeah. That's purposeful, passionate, consistent prayer. Wow, really good. That's, uh, that's all the questions we have today. Any closing thoughts before I wrap this up? Or? Well, I'd just like to invite all of our listeners to come out to the gate on Sundays. We do have a wonderful time together, wonderful worship and uh, fellowship. We pray for people. We believe uh, certainly that there are manifestations of God's presence uh, through which we want to touch other lives. And so uh, we just want to encourage everyone to come out uh, each Sunday. Yeah. And we want to thank you guys for sending in your questions. Um, we're going to put this on Facebook. We're going to put it on YouTube. We're going to put it on the app. We're going to put this everywhere. Um, the number will be at the bottom. It will be in the description. So if you have follow-up questions or you anything, comments, questions, go ahead and, and send those in. You can text them in. You can leave them in the comment box. We'd love to get some feedback from you guys. We love you guys. We appreciate you. We thank you for, for listening in today and being part of this podcast. And hopefully you enjoy it. And we'll see you later. Bye, guys.